Hello, so today we will be talking about the significance of SACP, which is also known as the South African Communist Party. So what were the origins of the South African Communist Party? Well, it started as the Communist Party of South Africa, CPSA, and it was founded in Cape Town in 1921. Two major events that shaped the group was first the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917, which led to the rise of the Soviet Union Russia, and also inspired revolutionaries across the globe, such as the CPSA, and prompted many of them to Marxism, which, if you don't know what Marxism is, it's basically the basis for the theory and practice of communism. Second thing that really shaped the group was the dramatic growth of the South African labor movement. This occurred due to the fall in the price of gold. Smuts government proposed to cut costs by lowering the wages of white workers and allowed black workers to have semi-skilled and supervisory positions. And if you don't know what I mean by Smuts government, he was the Prime Minister of South Africa at the time. The newly CPSA made their first move by supporting the protesting whites. So that's really what sparked their group also. Um, so over here is kind of their logo, and then over here is a picture of the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. So why did the Labor Party oppose the SACP? Punishments of smuts. So, the RAND revolt in an armed uprising of 22,000 white workers, and 22 were killed by the responding army. White voters put down Smuts for his role in putting down the rebellion, and his SAP party lost the 1924 election. And here's the picture of Smuts. Mm -hmm. The Labor Party. So... The Labor Party was willing to join a um, temporary alliance with Afrikaner nationalists in order to secure the interests of white workers at the expense of the white majority. Um, the CP CPSA advancement. The CPSA influenced white miners during a 1922 revolt. They were far more radical, I guess you say, less racist than the Labor Party. CPSA changes. Comintern, which is also known as the Communist International. This was a global organization of communist parties dominated by Moscow. Ordered the party to shift its focus from white labor to African proletariat. So, if you don't know what that means, it's the working class, especially those who earn their living by manual labor or are dependent by support on daily or casual employment. So, a couple of important CPSA figures, um, some white intellectuals were, I'm sorry if I don't know how to pronounce this, um, it's really late, so I'm not going to look up how to pronounce her names. Solly Sosk, Brom Fisher. There's Brom. What a nice name. Um, some black leaders was J.B. Marx, Joannes Naboski, Moses Kotim. So, there's... Joanne's, Joanne's, whatever. Mabuski. How did the CPSA and ANC interact? So, the CPSA first began to forge close links with the ANC in late 1920s. Josiah Gumedi. Gumendi. Gumendi. I don't know. The leader of the Congress in 1928, the party veered sharply to the left under his stewardship. The close relationship really faded in, in the 1930s as the ANC kind of swung 
back to the right under the conserv conserv conservative leadership of Pixley Semi. I do not, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Um, so the treason trial in 1956 to 1961. So both organizations were accused of treason, treason by the government due to the creation of the Freedom Charter. If you guys don't know what the Freedom Charter is, policies of the Charter kind of included a demand for multiracial, racial, democratically elected government, equal opportunities, the nationalization of banks, mines, and heavy industries, and redistribution of land. Post-war years, threat to the National Party. Due to the success of influencing workers across the racial divide that the National Party began to view it as a major threat to its own strategy of creating an Afrikaner nationalist movement, it united all social classes. And the National Party argued that the country was threatened by a global communist conspiracy, and the National Party members started saying that the that communism sought to undermine the Afrikaner people. Anti-communism election. Anti-communist and anti-black fears reached a peak in the build-up to the 1948 election. Um, yep, it's rigged. <laughs> the anti-red paranoia played a big role in D.F. Milan's election victory. Um, Philip Nell argues that this period marks the beginning of the National Party's long-running obsession with communism. Okay, defiance campaign. Um, the CPSA was now declared illegal and so they were driven underground. Um, leaders had banning orders and they, they defied and continued speaking out which led to their arrest. This includes J.B. Marks, Moses Cotain, Soli Sage, Sach, whatever, um, which organized a defiance campaign. So, SACP. The party was reconstructed illegally as a South African Communist Party in 1953. The SACP leader, <sighs> Yusuf, you Suf Dadu was elected chairman and Moses Cotain was um, the party's secretary. The name was significant now because it was primarily South African rather than an international group which it started as. Their goal was to work with, their, with other groups to bring an end to apartheid SACP's supporting role. So the SACP was vital in for why did the font change? I just realized that. Okay. Well, it's recording now. SACP was vital in further integrating anti-apartheid groups through the COP. SAP had a strong socialist influence on the Freedom Charter's principles. This influence was used against the ANC leaders during the treason trials, and leaders were later acquitted. Following the trials, the MK was formed, and the SACP was responsible for funding their safe house. At the Rivona trial, several of the SACP leaders were imprisoned. The SACP was to rely on outside help from the Soviet Union, and the SACP built strong relations with the ANC in Moscow, and the SACP would continue for a long time after. Alright, well, that's the end of the slide. I uh, hope you liked it. <laughs>